linear equations, and we're going to be learning how to solve um, systems of linear equations with two equations and two variables. And then we're also learning, going to learn how to solve um, systems of linear equations with three equations and three variables. So, like I said, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to interrupt me and just uh, come in and ask. Uh, I don't mind at all. So, okay. So basically, I want to show like visually what what is the goal of like what what are we trying to do? Um, so I have two lines here. I have four x plus five y equals fourteen, and then seven x plus three y equals thirteen. And then I have a graph up here of these lines. Does anybody want to tell me which one is blue and which one is red? Which one of these is the blue line? Which one's the red line? Is the blue line the first one? So the blue line is actually, that's a good guess. I appreciate you participating. The blue line is actually the, the uh, second one um, because, and the way you figure that out is if you solve for y, uh, it's actually y equals, so for the second line, it's y equals negative seven, seven x over three plus 13. And as the y value, or as that slope gets higher, uh, the line gets steeper. And then for the other one, if you solve for y, it's um, y equals uh, four fifths x equals plus fourteen. So that number is not as high, or negative four fifths x plus fifteen. So that number is not as high. Um, so the slope isn't as steep. That's okay. I appreciate you participating. Um, so what we're basically trying to find out is where these lines cross. Um, and you can see here that a solution and where they cross is at the point one, two, and this is what we're trying to figure out as far as what we're trying to solve. Um, so I just want to go through algebraically and show what happens when, um, to show what, what a solution looks like algebraically, um, versus visually. So we have the original equation that I showed you, um, four X plus five Y equals 14 and then seven X plus three Y equals 13. And if we just plug in the point one, two into it, so X equals one Y equals two, we get uh, four times one plus five times two equals 14. And then seven times one plus three times two equals 13. And then um, next um, we just simplify. So four plus five times two equals 10 equals 14. And then seven uh, plus three times two, which equals six uh, equals 13. And then we get 14 equals 14 and 13 equals 13. So we're really looking for, um, you know, a solution that makes both of these equations through for some true for some x y. So um, why is this why is this a good thing for you? Like, how could you use this what I showed you to your advantage when taking a test or something like that? If maybe you don't have a graph. Okay, that's a little tricky. So, so basically, what I'm trying to get at is that if you have a proposed solution to a linear equation and you want to test that, you can actually just go back through into the problem and plug that in. You can actually just plug it in yourself and see and do the basic arithmetic and then see does this equation hold true for both my equations or does this solution hold true for both of my equations? And if it doesn't, then you know that you did something wrong along the way. And if it does, then you know you did it right. So you can use that greatly to your advantage when just wanting to go through and check for a solution. Okay, so there's two um, algebraic ways to find a solution. Um, if you don't have a graph or any way of seeing it, um, there's substitution and elimination. So just real quick, um, substitution, you typically use, it's typically used when there's um, one or more of the co four coefficients of the variables is equal to one or negative one. And then how you do substitution is you solve for the variable with the coefficient equal to one. So you solve for that variable and then plug that into the other equation and then solve for the other variable using algebraic simplification. And then after, and this will become more clear as I do an example. And then after solving for one of the variables, you substitute the solution that you got, whatever number you get into the one of the equations and then solve for the other variable. So I'll let you go ahead and take notes over that real quick. If you guys are writing stuff down, let me know if I'm going too fast, by the way. Okay. 
So I figured I'll give you an example so it's a little bit more clear. Um, so this is a substitution example where it'd be it would be nice to do substitution. Um, the reason um, being is would this yeah what's up? Would, would the slides be posted in Canvas? There'll be a recording. I can yeah I'll make sure Dr. Boyd posts this. I'll send it over. I'll send two through email and then I'll make sure she posts this and then also there will be a video recording. On okay. Campus. Thank All right. you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we have X plus four Y equals 11 and three X plus three Y equals 15. Um, so you can see here in this top equation that um, there's this, you know, X in the top left corner with a coefficient equal to one. So this would be a nice time to use substitution since we can just subtract one of the terms over and then we have a solution to our equation. So I'm just gonna subtract the four Y over and I get X equals negative four Y plus 11. And then what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to plug in that X into the other equation. So I'm gonna plug in the negative four Y plus 11 four X into the other equation. And then I'll have a full equation with just Y's in it. And then I can solve for Y. So I'm just, right now I'm just plugging in negative four Y plus 11 for X. So that'd be three times the quantity, negative four Y plus 11, close quantity, plus three Y equals 15. Then you distribute the three, and that's equal to negative 12 Y plus 33. And then you, let's see, I'm adding like terms. I'm sorry, I'm subtracting the 33 over to the other side. Um, so you get 15 minus 33 is um, negative 18. And then I'm adding, I'm combining like terms. So negative 12 Y plus three Y equals negative nine Y, which is equal to negative 18. And then I'm getting, and I'm dividing both sides by negative nine. So I get Y equals two. So the Y value to the solution of the system of equations is, is two. Now to find the X value, you just go back through and plug in Y equals two into one of the equations and then solve for X as such. So I'm gonna plug Y equals two into the top equation. You could easily do it for the bottom equation, but the top equation is going to be easier because you know x. You can just subtract something over and get the x value. Um, so if you plug in y equals two into the top equation, you get x plus four times two equals eleven, and then that's eight. So x plus eight equals eleven, and then you subtract eight over to the other side, and you get x equals three. So the solution to the system of equations is the point three two. Does that make sense for everybody as far as like substitution wise, how to do it for, for two equations and two unknowns? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty, much, um, pretty, pretty basic review of like algebra one, you know, been doing this since algebra one or algebra two. Um, so good. Okay. So the next, the next, um, method to find the solution of a system of equations is called elimination or your book calls it the addition method. And this is typically used when none of the four coefficients of the variables is equal to one or negative one. So what happens is, is that you can use substitution no matter what really, but when none of the four coefficients of the variables is equal to one or negative one, it becomes a lot harder to do it um, just arithmetically wise because you'll get, and when you divide over, you might get some fractions and it'll be a lot harder to find the solutions when you have fractions and stuff. So doing elimination, to avoid having to deal with fractions is, is very, um, very useful. Like, so yeah, helpful alternative to substitution to avoid working with fractions. And then the way you do elimination is you multiply one or both equations by some constant and then such that adding them together allows cancellation of variables. So I'll show you later on how that works. And then you solve for one of the variables algebraically after you add them together because when you cancel out one of the variables, you'll just have one variable left and there'll just be a regular algebraic expression or algebraic equation. And then after solving for one variable, uh, substitute the solution to that variable into one of the two equations and solve for the other variable to find the solution. So uh, starting off with this, with this equation uh, or this system, uh, what do you guys feel like would be a good way to go about it that, that would be, you know, easy to solve with elimination? Also, I have this, I have this PowerPoint pre-made, so I prefer you guys give me the answer to the, what I put pre-made on the PowerPoint. 
Um, we can multiply the first <coughs> equation by two and then the second equation by four so that we can cancel out, like subtract the x's and then make y the subject. Yeah, so, so do you mean the, the first equation by two and the second equation by negative four? Yeah, yes. So that, so that they cancel out when you add together? Yes, yes. So that's really good. Um, what I ended up doing is just, is just you can just multiply one or both the equations by some constant. That's really good though. Uh, that definitely will work every time is by multiplying by each other's coefficients. Uh, what would be easier or a little easier on you would just be to multiply the bottom equation by negative two, because that does get you what you want. You get a negative four X out of that. And then when you add them together, it does end up canceling out. But that does work what you're doing, but um, yeah. So I'm just multiplying that bottom equation by negative two. Um, and then if you multiply the bottom equation by negative two, you get negative four X uh, minus 14 Y equals negative 36. And then I'm going to add that top equation to it. And then I'm just adding the top equation. So plus four X plus three Y equals 14. And then if you go down through the negative four X and the positive four X cancel out so that that does get me to where I want. Um, and then the negative 14 Y and then plus three Y equals negative 11 Y. And then negative 36 plus 14 equals uh, negative 22. Um, can we also do like subtractions, like subtracting one equation from the other one? Um, yeah, so, so really, if I change the order of addition, so I just, I did a negative plus, plus a positive. If I change this order and I flip the fourth line and the fifth line, technically I'm doing subtraction. So it really just depends on what order you're doing it in. So you can do addition or subtraction as long as the variables cancel out. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then, so divide both sides by negative 11 and you get Y equals two. And then you solve the X, what, the X value the same way as before. So you just plug in uh, Y equals two into one of the two equations and solve for X. And then, so I'm, I'm just gonna plug it into the second one. Uh, so two X plus seven times two equals 18, seven times two equals 14. So two X plus 14 equals 18, subtract the 14 over and you get two X equals four and then um, X equals two. So two, two is the solution to the system of equations. So does that make sense to everybody how to do, how to, um, solve a system of equations with, with two variables using elimination. Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. So something important, um, if you perform elimination uh, or substitution and get, j get just the value A equals A, so like for some, just for some uh, constant A, so you might get one equals one or zero equals zero or two equals two, uh, the solution to the the solution to the system is all real numbers. It's all reals. And then if the solution is all real numbers, then the system is said to be dependent. So that's something you need to memorize. Is that if 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 um if the solution is all reals, then the system is said to be independent. Um, and then next um. If you perform elimination or substitution, you get A equals B. So you get like the value one equals two, zero equals two, just some untrue statement comes out of that. Then um, you'll get, then there's no solution to the system. Uh, and the system is said to be inconsistent. And then a system of equations with exactly one solution, like I showed you guys with the examples beforehand, um, is said to be just consistent. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you guys a second to write down the terms if you need to. Need to do that. Okay. 
So for this for this left for this left graph, uh, would that be considered dependent, consistent, or inconsistent? Dependent. Right, it would be dependent because um, if you see, they're actually the same line. So they all overlap each other. They overlap each other by every single point. So that, that that's the reason why the solution is all reals because every single real number is a solution to the to the system, no matter what point you put in. And then, and you'll see it. It's just the same line. So you, it's really just a system where you have one line, and then the other line is just a multiple of the other one. Okay. So, and then for the next one, is this uh, dependent, consistent, or inconsistent? Say again. Consistent. Right. It's consistent. And then the solution to the to the system is just x y, the point x y that shows on the graph. And then there's exactly one solution, so it's said to be consistent. And then for this next for the next uh, graph, is it well, you cross by elimination. Is it dependent, consistent, or inconsistent? Inconsistent. Right, just inconsistent. Um, it'll come in the form A equals B. Is some constant equal to a constant that's not itself? And then there's no solutions. Um, if you'll notice what on the inconsistent solution, what's true about the lines? What is what it's how are they related to each other? They're parallel. Yeah, they're parallel. All right, yeah, good. They're parallel. And then what does that have to do? What does that have to do with their slope? They have the same slope. Right, exactly. So like an inconsistent solution is lines with the same slope, but different y-intercepts. And then if they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, that's just the same line, the same line, and then that solution's all reals. Um, and then any other combination is going to be exactly one solution. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. No questions? Okay. Awesome. So that's it for, for, did I see a comment? Okay, yeah, just, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, one second. There we go. I was looking for that option. Um, so for the next one, we're going to be doing system of linear equations with three equations and three variables. And it's a little bit more complicated, but it's um, basically the same thing. It's a lot of the same concepts. So I figured I'd go through visually and uh, show you uh, visually what it looks like uh, for a system of three equations. Uh, Dr. Boyd, are you, would you make them have to like identify these graphs when they're when it's in like three dimensions, like this type of thing? Will they have to like, you know, no. that? No. Yeah, they do not have to sketch these at all. This, this can, I think that the illustrations are super valuable. They just need to know how to do it algebraically though, for me. Yeah. So so this will help them understand, yeah. and, but they won't have to recreate. Right, right, right. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is visually what it looks like. Instead of, you guys are used to, R2, which is just like the flat plane, and then we're adding a Z axis, which is R3, which is a three dimensional plane, but you're not gonna, you're gonna, you're not gonna have to identify or have to graph these types of things. It's just visually, I wanna give you a good intuition of what it looks like to have these solutions. So um, this is what it looks like when there's just a single point. Uh, the point that we're looking for is where it all crosses right there in that little point X, Y, Z. And that's when there's exactly one solution. And then, if there's an infinite number of solutions, um, it'll create sort of like this, this spiral kind of like asterisk looking figure. Um, and there will be, you can see there's a line that crosses through all of them. 
um, that it goes through, and that has, and that's uh, an infinite number of solutions. Also, if all the um, three equations are just scalar multiples of each other, then it's just going to be three lines or three of the same plane overlapping each other, and that's also going to be an infinite number of solutions. And then the planes that have no point in common are, are planes like these um, at the bottom here, where it's just like three parallel planes, or you know, like one of the planes is perpendicular, or one of the planes is like offset, and two of the planes are parallel. And then uh, this one is just there's no, none of the planes are, are crossing at a certain point, um, so there's no point where they cross in between. Um, and then visually, yeah, it's just an intuition as far as like what it looks like to have infinite solutions or one solution or no solutions with with three unknowns and three equations. And then I'll show you again, it's substitution elimination is how you figure out how to uh, algebraically how you find these solutions. So substitution wise, um, again, it's typically used when one or more of the now nine coefficients of the variables is equal to one or negative one. Um, and then you, the way you do it is solve for the variable with the coefficient equal to one. So it's pretty, it's pretty similar to the, to the other substitution method and plug it into the other two equations. And then after you solve there, are, you now have uh, two equations with two variables and two unknowns. Um, I'm not sure why I put two unknowns right there. I think that's a typo. Just two equations with two variables. And then you solve for X, Y for that solution, like I showed you how to do before for two equations and two unknowns, and then use that X, Y found to solve for Z back into your original system. So I'll show you guys an example uh, here in a second. I'll let you guys write that down if you guys are taking notes. Okay, so um, this is a substitution example. Um, this is a system of three variables and three equations. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna solve, there's a few different ways I can go about this because there's a lot of different um, variables with coefficient one for this equation. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solve for the um, top Z, for the top one for Z. Um, It'll make it easier when I plug it back into that last equation, because that's just a variable with coefficient equal to 1, and it'll be easier to not have to distribute. Um, and then if I solve for Z on this top equation, I get Z equals 8 minus 3X minus 2Y. And then I'm just going to be, I'm going to be plugging these into the other two equations. Make sure you plug it into the other two equations, not the same equation, or else it won't work. So I'm going to plug it into the other two equations. So if I plug it into that second one, I get 4x plus 2y plus 3 times 8 minus 3x minus 2y equals 12. They're in parentheses, so I'm just replacing the z with 8 minus 3x minus 2y. And then um, I'm just plugging it in to the third equation. So I get x plus 3y plus 8 minus 3x minus 2y equals 6. And then I'm distributing the three. Sorry, I shouldn't have gone back and forth like this, but um, I'm distributing the three out to the eight minus three x minus two y from that, from that top. And then, um, let's see here. And then the the it's just a one on the outside for the eight minus three x minus two y for this third last equation. And then I'm just keeping that the same. So this is the same example, just continued. So right now I'm just combining, I'm just solving, I'm just, um, sorry, combining like terms to get it in the form of a system of equations with two variables and two unknowns. So we have all X's and Y's for this top one and all X's and Y's for the second one. So if you just go through and solve uh, for negative, it would be negative 5x minus 4y equals negative 12, and then negative 2x plus y equals negative 2. And then this, the last two lines, is just a system of linear equations with two equations and two unknowns. 
So I'm not going to like suffer you guys the monotony of going through. I already showed you how to do that, and you guys have been doing that since since Algebra one. So um, you'll go through and solve for that for that x y, and then you'll go back into the original system and plug that in for x y, and then solve for z, and that's how you get your solution. Does that make sense to everybody? What I showed. Yes. Basically, just looking for X and Y, not necessarily Z or Z also, when we just go back and find X and Y and substitute to get Z. Right, exactly. So after you get the, the two equations and two unknowns to that part, you're just solving for X and Y, just using what I showed you beforehand. And then you'll go back into the original equation and then plug in X and Y for whatever you get and then solve for Z from there. Does, it, does that make sense? Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, awesome. No, yeah, no problem. Okay, and then the next, so the other solution or the other way to figure method to figure out uh, the solution X, Y, Z is using Gaussian elimination. And this is typically used when none of the nine coefficients of the variables is equal to one or negative one. Um, to again, avoid using fractions. And the way you actually do this is you pick two distinct sets of two equations, and this will make more sense when I go through and do it. So two distinct sets of two equations, and then you cancel out the same variable from the two sets that I showed you by applying multiples and by adding them together. And then you'll have a system, after you do that, you'll have a system of linear equations of two equations and two unknowns. And then you'll go through and do the same thing, just solving for X, Y, and then going back and solving for Z. So it'll make more sense when I go through and do an example um, so for this example, we're just going to use, um, Gaussian elimination. Um, the, the two distinct sets of two equations, what I mean by that is like, um, so you have the first equation, I'm going to do elimination on, let's see here. I'm going to do elimination on Z with the first and second equation. And then I'm going to do elimination on Z with the first and third equation. You can also use the second and third equation if you want to. Um, just whatever combination you want to use, as long as the two, this, as long as the two sets of equations that you pick from are two distinct sets, uh, it'll work. So I'm just doing the first. I'm just doing elimination with the first and second equation and the first and third equation. So in order to eliminate the z from the first equation, I'm going to multiply this top equation by three. And then I'm going to multiply the equation below it by negative two so I can get positive six Z and negative six Z, and then that'll cancel out. So just multiplying uh, three times two X plus three Y plus two Z uh, is equal to three times seven. And then that's equal to six X plus nine Y plus six Z is equal to 21. And then distributing that negative two out to that second equation you get negative 8x plus 4y minus 6z equals negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be adding those equations together. So 6 minus 8x, excuse me, 6 minus 8x is equal to negative 2x. And then 9 plus 4y is equal to positive 13y. And then uh, positive 6z and then minus 6z is equal to 0c. So that just cancels out. That does what we wanted it to do. And uh, 21 minus 10 is equal to 11. And that's how you find the first equation to your 2 by 2 system is negative 2x plus 13y equals 11. And then I'm going to be doing that. Next, I'm going to be doing elimination on z. So it needs to be the same variable on equations 1 and 3. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm, so I got a positive 2z on the top here and then a positive 2z on the bottom. So I'm just gonna be multiplying that third equation by negative one so that the positive 2z and the negative 2z cancel out. So I have a uh, positive 2x plus 3y plus 2z equals seven. That just stays the same. And then I've got negative one times negative 5x plus 4y plus 2z equals negative one times one. And then that stays the same. And then if you distribute the negative one out to that second equation, you get 5x minus 4y minus 2z equals negative one. 
And then I'm going to be adding those two equations, those two bottom equations together. So 2x plus 5x equals 7x. And then 3y minus 4y is equal to negative y. And then plus 2z minus 2z is equal to 0z. Zero c, zero c. And then that, that got us where we wanted to, so we canceled out that z variable. And, that, and then uh, 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. So the new system of equations, the, the equation I got from that 1, 2 combination using elimination on z, I got negative 2x plus 13y equals 1, or 11. And then uh, on this, uh, in doing elimination on z with the first and third equation, I got 7x minus y equals 6. And then this is just a system of linear equations with, with two equations and two unknowns. So again, you just solve for x, y, and then use that solution for x, y to solve for z in the original three equations. Uh, does that make sense to everybody how I got there, how I did that? Um, and then, um, like, when we choose the, the two equations to subtract or add together, are we, like, are we supposed to always eliminate the z? No, uh, you don't have to eliminate the z. Um, here, let me go back to my example. So, um, the way you pick the equations is just by, you can pick, the two equations you can use, you can use the first and second one, or the first and third one, or the second and third one, any combination of those two. So you have three options. Um, as long as you're picking different pairs of equations. Um, and then you can just solve, you can just make sure you solve for the same variable, make sure you eliminate the same variable for both of whatever two equations you choose. And then you can go about solving any variable you want to. Just make sure you're consistent with plugging it back into the original equation. Uh, so if you eliminate, for example, if you eliminate the x variable from both equations, uh, make sure you know that you're solving for yz and when you plug it back in, you plug it in for y and you plug it in for z. And make sure you, so make sure you plug it in for those. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Everybody good? Okay. One second. Okay. So um, that's the end of like the lecture part. I figured we could go through and um, do a couple of uh, word problems, uh, word examples, and I can go through and show you how to do it. Um, so I figured I'll let you guys do this on your own and then you guys can give me the solution that you guys get after a while. Um, so I figured that the first one we could do um, is this example here. Um, so basically you need, it's a word problem and I want you to figure out what system of equations you can derive from that and then try to solve it. So I might just go through and do the first one here um, just to show you guys how to kind of go from the, the sentences to the, to the system of equations and then solve for it. So here we have the uh, find the value of two numbers if their sum is 120 and the difference is 40. So does anybody know um, what system of equations I would be looking at as far as that word problem goes? Maybe x plus y equals 120 and then x minus y equal to the, the other number, I forgot it. X minus Y equals 40? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I'll go through and solve this. This is very nice. Um, what would be a good way of solving this, do you think? Well, how should I go about solving this, this system of equations? You could do substitution since the coefficients are all either one or negative one. Yeah, we could do substitution. Uh, that would be good. So um, just to do substitution, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this top equation, I'm gonna subtract x over. So if I take that top equation and subtract x over, I'm gonna get y equals negative x plus 120. And then I'm going to plug in the y, whatever the y I got into this bottom equation here. So that's gonna be x minus negative x plus 120 is equal to 40. 
and then I'm going to distribute the negative out to both of these. So x plus x plus, I'm sorry, minus, minus 120 is equal to 40. And then just combine like terms, 2x minus 120 equals 40. And then add the 120 over 2x equals 160. And then x equals 80. So now we're going to plug in x equals 80 into the one of the original two equations. When we're plugging the value of x into the equation, can we plug it into the equation where we made y the subject? You can plug it into either two. So when you solve for x, you can plug it in to any of the two equations that you want. Okay. All right. Um, and then um, 80 plus y equals 120, and then you subtract 80 over, and you get y equals 40. So let's check real quick. So x equals, so 80 plus, I'll keep that there. So I'm just checking the uh, solution now. So 80 plus 40 equals 120, and then 80 minus 40 is equal to 40, and then 80 plus 4 is 120 is equal to 120, and then 80 minus 40 is 40, which equals 40. Looks good. Okay. So I'm going to have you guys go through and do an example. I'll have you guys do this one right here, the second one. Um, I'll give you guys, you know, three or four minutes to do it. We'll, uh, I'll ask you guys what you guys get when we come back at 145. Does that sound good? Just take three or four minutes to, to go through and do that one. Okay, it's about 144. So does anybody want to want to walk through what they did for this problem? Um, I had two equations. So my first equation was 3 
s so i made s represent the price of the senior citizen ticket and then c for the children's price so my two equations were 3s plus c equals 38 and then 3s plus 2c equals 52. So, yeah it's very smart it's very smart to to have your variables reflect uh what you're doing in the actual problem i was going to make that point is that that's a really good that's a really good way to keep track of things so go ahead and how did you uh go through and and solve this so i made c the subject in the first equation so c equals 38 minus 3s then i substituted C into the second equation. Okay. So 3s plus 2 into bracket 38 minus 3s equals 52. Then, Good. so 35 plus 76. Oh, sorry. Is that this 3s? Is a, yeah, that's an S. Sorry. 3s plus 76 minus 6s equals 52. And then negative 3s equals negative 24. So I divided both sides by negative 3, and I had s to be equal to 8. OK. So then I substituted the value of s into the equation for the equation for c. So c is equal to 38 minus 3 into bracket 8. So C was equals 38 minus 24, and then C was 14. Okay, good. Yep, this is right. So S equals so C equals 14, and S is equal to 8. Uh, if we want to just go through and plug it in back into our original equation, uh, we get 3. Just real quick, we get 3 times 8 plus 14. 38 and then 3 times 8 plus 2 times 14 is equal to 52 and then 3 times 8 is 24 plus 14 equals 38 and then 2 times 14 is 28 24 plus 14 is equal to 38 and 38 equals 38. So that's good. And then 24 plus 28 is 52. And then you get 52 equals 52. And that looks good. So good job. Um, I'm just going to stop here. I appreciate you guys participating in stuff. Um, I had a lot of fun lecturing today. So yeah, I just figured that'd be a good any point. I'll let uh, Dr. Boyd talk if she wants to. All right. Well, how are y'all doing? Does it all make sense? Would you like to see some more examples? Are you happy? We pretty good. Like, like us yes. to see like more examples on the on the three like the system with three equations. Some of the okay. word examples. Sure. Well, let's see if we can find one. Um Michael, do you want to take that on, or do you want me to just put something up and you run with it, or would you rather me just handle that one? Uh, you can, like, throw something up, and I can go through and do it. All right. Let me see if I can find. See, what we want to do is I could just make one up off the top of my head, but then the algebra could get really ugly, and you don't want to go there. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Um, so let me find one that's going to be reasonable so that it makes sense what you're seeing. Um, here, let's start with this one. So I'm just going to take a picture and I'll plop it on the screen and give everybody a chance to write it down. And then I'll turn this back over to Michael and he can run with the solution. Oh yeah, this class is at 2.15, eh? Yeah, that's right. Okay. We, we got the, so. I apologize. I apologize. I thought it ended at 1.50. I apologize. No, you and you timed it beautifully because, you know, 
And, but that's excellent because now we have time to go back and review and look at the things that we really have questions about. So here yeah. is um, from your textbook. This is a pretty straightforward one to start with and to think about how we want to do. So let's look at this three equations, three unknowns. Now, all the things that you know from two equations, two unknowns, play substitution, elimination, um, and so those are awesome, but um, it's just you got a few extra steps, a piece at a time. But if you're good with two equations, two unknowns, two variables, you're good. You've got all the tools you need to be successful here. Give me one second. I'm writing it down real quick. Absolutely. Just let me know you're ready. Okay. And those of y'all playing along at home can start working. And then Michael will catch up and you can check what you did. And listen, like you've seen, there's more than one way to do these. And so if you're working with someone or you're talking about your stuff with someone and you have one solution and they have a different solution, that doesn't necessarily mean either one of you is wrong. Um, there are gonna be many different ways to attack the same problem. And all that matters is that you follow the steps, you're really careful and patient with your algebra, and that, um, and then you'll all, the different paths will all lead to the same correct answer. So don't let, um, don't let the idea that there's only one right way to do it, that, that's not true. This is um, one of those situations in math where you might have many different paths to the same answer. Okay, I have it written out now, so. All right, so let's get, I'm gonna stop sharing and pass the ball back to you. If I can, let's see, or you might can take, oh, excellent. You just wrote it, it's much better. Yep. All right, take it away. Okay, so um, the first thing I would do when, when solving this is I noticed that there's, you know, just an X here, just an X right here, just by itself. So right now I'm thinking substitution. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for this X right here. So I have X equals negative five Y plus two Z. It, sorry. Minus 29. And then, yep. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute X, what well, I just solved for X in to the other two equations. So these top two equations that I have here. So plug and it into one the top. Michael, one second. Let's open it up. Does anybody see a different way to start? This is perfect and this will work. But what grabs you about this system? I actually done this elimination instead because I usually work with the first equations and that would have given me a whole fraction. Mm. That's a good point. You, you really do want to be flexible. Sometimes elimination is a great way to go. Sometimes substitution is a great way to go. And so sometimes we pick our favorite and we stick with that thing all the time but being flexible will save you steps. So that is excellent. All right, carry on. Yeah, so like to Dr. Boyd's point, um, this unit a lot has to do with playing to your strengths and knowing, you know, what method is easier for you and then having a certain proclivity towards a certain method. Um, I just chose substitution since I saw, you know, this, this has a coefficient of one. So it just seemed that's that kind of is what jumped out at me, but definitely there are other ways you can go through and do this. So um, just plugging in X for the top equation, you get four times negative five Y plus two Z minus 29 is equal to 31. And then 
I'm just going to grab, I'm going to get my second equation. I'm going to get my first equation here. So I'm just going to solve for this. And then after you distribute the four, you're going to get negative 20 Y plus eight Z uh, minus, let's see, um, 116 is equal to 31. And then I'm going to add the 116 over. So I get negative 20 Y plus eight Z um, is equal to 100, 147. And that's going to be the first equation that I use for my two variables, two unknowns. Um, and then to find the second equation, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. I'm going to do it on this left side. I'm going to plug in X into the other equation. So the second equation. I'm going to have negative, and then I'm just plugging in X. So it would be quantity negative 5Y plus 2Z minus 29 is equal to 20. And then I have, if I'm distributing the negative, I get 5Y minus 2Z plus 29 is equal to 20. And then just subtract the 29 over. So you get 5Y minus 2Z is equal to negative nine. And then I'm just gonna put this equation over here. Uh, so I have negative 5Y minus 2Z is equal to negative nine. Um, and then at, this is just, and this is my system of two variables and two unknowns or two equations. Two unknowns. Um, I you think, to go through and do this? I think there's something wrong somewhere. I don't know the, when you put the X into the second equation, you forgot to add the four Z at the end. I mean, the two Y plus four Z, like, like in the second oh, yeah, equation, something wrong oh, in okay. the second equation, do, do you see it? Oh yeah, my bad. Yeah, I totally forgot to, my bad. Okay. You're right. Um, so, okay. So for this top equation, that's totally my bad. Uh, good way to call that out. So in this top equation or in this equation right here, um, I'm supposed to plug in my X and then put negative minus three Y plus five Z on the outside. And then when I go back through, I wish there was an easier way, for, easier way for me to erase. And then when I go back through and uh, do the algebra and distribute and combine like terms, um, let's see here. This will just turn into negative 23y and then I'm adding 5z onto this, let's turn to 13z. And then down here, for this part, um, I forgot to add the 2y plus 4z. So, so this will just turn into negative 3y and this will turn into positive 2z. Sorry about that. Um, does that make sense? And then you solve, and then you have a two by two, a two equations, two unknown system of equations. And then make sure whatever you solve for Y, you plug in to the Y into your original equation and whatever you solve for Z, you plug in for Z into your original equation, then solve for X. Um, does that make sense? Do you guys think it'd be good for me to go through and, and do this and then solve? but you won't be able to solve through substitution this time, right? Right, right. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Let I think the, the second one should be 7y plus 2z equal to negative 9. Oh, yeah, you're right. 5 plus 2y. Okay. 
Okay, let me just make sure I went through and did this right. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through and solve. Um, nothing great really stands out for me as far as elimination goes. So I'll just, um, let's see. So I'll solve for Z for this top equation or for this, this two by two, um, I'll multiply the top equation by two and then the bottom equation by thir by negative 13 so that the, the Z variable cancels out. Um, so multiplying, so we got two. So right now I'm solving for Z. So we have two times negative 23 Y plus 13 Z is equal to two times 147. And then negative 46y plus 26z is equal to 194, or sorry, 294. And then Sorry guys, I don't have this pre-made, so I'm just going off what I feel like I should do. So negative 13, it'd be better if I were to like this, negative 13 times seven Y plus two Z is equal to negative 13 times negative nine. And then just doing the same thing, negative 46 Y plus 26 Z is equal to 294. I think it's negative 91. I'm sorry? Negative 91, Y. Okay, okay. Oh. Oh, I'm solving. I'm sorry. I'm doing this one. Okay. Um, And then negative 91, Y. Uh, negative 13 plus 2Z is equal to negative 26Z is equal to 294 and then the negative 13 times negative 9 is equal to 117 and then negative 91y is equal to I believe 411 Yeah, and that's not going to evenly divide, so I messed up somewhere. I don't know. I messed up somewhere in the arithmetic, so. Does generally, do you guys know, does that make sense to you guys? Maybe if it was like a simpler problem, or like less complicated numbers. Right, right. Oops, sorry, I picked a bad <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, oh, it's really? easy for you to say. Michael might be thinking other things in his brain. <laughs> Yeah, this one was a mess. This one was a mess. But I tell you what, yeah, now that we've learned something, let's let's back up a minute and maybe keep this screen, but let's open a new screen. And same problem, like just copy and paste this system, put it in in a new paint. Okay. And let's see what happens if we use elimination on the last two rows. Okay. And um, 
and then solve for Y and Z from there. Right, okay. because it, because the coefficients of X in the original equation two and original equation three, because they're opposites, um, we, um, we can eliminate the X right away. And so now with new equation two, new equation three, we get um, the, um, we get just two equations in two variables. So now we're, we're looking at something a little friendlier. So we can solve for Y, we can solve for Z and use those in the original equation to find our X. It might still, so two lessons that come out of this um, is first of all, this can be complicated and you have to be patient with yourself you have to really take your time and use good notation and you have to to forgive yourself if it doesn't go the way you want just because you make a mistake it does not mean you don't know what you're doing right i mean y'all see that in me all the time i'm always making mistakes it doesn't mean i don't understand what i'm doing it means i made a mistake and you're gonna make mistakes as you start this so mistakes really aren't a big deal Number one. Number two, ugly numbers to a mathematician are just numbers. And so don't necessarily feel like you got something crazy like 511 thirteenths and you must have done something wrong. You might have, but you might not have. So let's go through and see if this gets us somewhere friendlier. Okay. It might, it might not. Yeah, I probably won't since, since we're solving for the same Y as before. Mm -hmm. It probably will still be pretty messy, but but yeah, I think, it's I think you're right. Do it. Um, yeah, so so that was the substitution method. If you want to do the same thing, but for the elimination method, um, I think a good a good set of equations or the two pairs I think you should use is is the first and the second one, and then mm -hmm. the second and the third one. Um, Beautiful. Particularly the second and the third one, because the the solving for X, because the negative X and the positive X cancel out right away. So I can just add those two together. So I should probably label these. I think it'd be good. I think that'd make it more clear if I labeled these. So let's go one, and I'll label that two, and then I'll label that three. So if I'm combining, I'm going to start by combining my second and third equation and then solving for X, or I'm sorry, eliminating X. Um, so I have negative X plus 2Y plus 4Z is equal to 20. And then X plus 5Y minus 2Z is equal to negative 29. And then you can see right away this negative X and this positive X, we can just add them together and those will cancel out. So if we add them together, we get negative X plus X is uh, zero X, so that cancels out. And then we get seven Y uh, plus two Z is equal to negative nine. And this will be my first equation that I use um, for uh, elimination, the two by two system. And then for the other way, the other two by two equation that I'm going to be finding is by using the first, by doing elimination for X on the first and second equation. So the way I'm gonna be doing that is I'm just gonna keep this first equation the same. And then I'm gonna be multiplying the second equation by four so that the X's cancel out. And then again, I'm just keeping that first equation the same. And then I'm gonna be distributing the four out so that would be into the second equation. So that'd be negative four X plus eight Y plus 16 Z 
is equal to 80. And then I'm just, so I'm gonna add them together now. And then 4X minus 4X is equal to zero X. So that just cancels out, so that's good. And then negative three Y plus eight Y is five Y. And then five Z plus 16 Z is 21 Z. And then 31 plus 80 is equal to 111, right? And then now I have a second equation. Here, and then this is going to be the system of equations that I'll solve for with two variables and two unknowns. So I'll go ahead and do that and solve for Y and see if I get the same thing. So solving for Y, I'm just gonna multiply this top part by this first equation of my two by two system by negative five. And then I'm gonna be multiplying that bottom equation by seven. And then I'm gonna distribute the negative five in that top equation. So I get negative 35y minus 10z is equal to 45. And then I'm gonna distribute the seven in the bottom equation. So I get 35y plus 147z is equal to 777. And then the y's cancel out. So that's good when I add them together. So now I'm just gonna add them together. And then negative 10z plus 147z is 137z is equal to 45 plus 70 or 777, which is equal to 822. And I'm not really sure if this might go into it evenly. I think it's six, I think Z equals six. I'm gonna plug it into a calculator, yeah. So Z equals six. So I probably did something wrong in the substitution uh, department when I tried it that way. I think I just did something um, arithmetically wrong. So I'll go through and solve the rest of it. So we have Z equals six. And then here I'll just plug in Z equals six in my top equate into this two by two system and then solve for Y. So if I plug in Z equals six for this top equation, I get uh, let's see here, seven Y plus two times six is equal to negative nine, I think. So seven Y plus two times six equals negative nine. And then I get seven Y plus 12 equals negative nine. Seven Y equals negative 21 and y equals negative three. And then to find x, I'm gonna be plugging z equals six and y equals negative three into my original three by three system. So let's plug it in for this one, for equation three. So I'm gonna get x plus five times negative three, I think. So you have five times negative three minus two times six is equal to 29. I'm sorry, negative 29. And then I'm gonna get X plus five times negative three is negative 15, so minus 15. And then negative two times six is negative 12 is equal to negative 29. Uh, negative 15, so X minus 15 minus 12 is equal to negative 27, is equal to negative 29, and then I get X equals to uh, negative two.
So the overall, the overall solution, if you look at all these combined to the system of equations is the point negative two, negative three, and six. Does that make sense? But how would you, like, I understand negative two, negative three, because you're used to working with X and Y, but six, like, that's part of the answer, or is that just to show that it's a, like, that's part of the solution, because it's three on the third plane, right? Right, so six is just, is just part of the solution. So I was solving for, I went through and solved for Z using elimination. And then I just went back through into my two by two and plugged in Z equals six and then solve for Y. And then I went back and plugged in the Y and the Z values that I got into my original three equations to get X. Does that make sense? To work with Z. Yeah. All right, Dr. Boyd, it's, it's two fifteen, So I'm not sure if you want to end it off. Oh, there it goes. I have to find my unmute button. You did a great job. Michael, you took us all the way to the end. This is excellent work. I appreciate your leading the way. We're going to have more fun on Friday. Now, Friday is a 50 minute class, so yeah. we don't get that extra time for practice. Um, but we'll be looking at systems of equations, but this time what to do when they're not all linear. What if they're not all lines? Also, it's really important that you understand these